the lord be with you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen please be seated friends good morning how are you all is well at least affirm it yes i give you greetings in the name of triune god what a great joy joy is a state of emotion joy is a state of our mind unfortunately the human beings tend to learn and began to believe that joy is something always tied up or related to the physical things or the materialistic things but in fact which is not it is only your state of being it is only your state of thinking it is only your state how you believe in things the human beings tend to say that i found joy or i am searching for joy they always try to say that i am trying to find something which is quite materialistic but even if everything goes against us because time and tide will never stop for anyone it has to go on we are in the flow life has to go on so sometimes time and tide are not always soft for us but still we need to find some joy even in against the current that's what god has taught us so i am sure whatever the state it may be the god whom we trust the lord whom we adore the lord whom we worship is always with us and continues to be with us my experience always taught me that as long as we look unto the tide and time we'll never find the happiness maybe the true happiness or joy this is what the art of life it becomes we need to find or explore or search the author of joy who is our lord the savior jesus christ in these two things time and tide there is always christ the cosmic creator so therefore i am sure those who own christ as their god and savior will truly find their inner peace and inner joy am i right you should say yes. yes pastor you are right today we have another important maybe a something which imparts the state of education in which we are called for the whole church of south india today is observing as the laity sunday it is the ministry of the laity all the scripture portions that have been read to us talks about the will of god the work of god that beings done in various states of life in order to fulfill the vision of god the term laity i do not know for what reason it has been become a word where we could able to see a gulf 
between the two poles the christendom has very two important significant centrifugals the whole ministry revolves around the clergy as well as the laity today we need to understand the significance of both this important calling for the ministry the rift between these two segments that is the clergy and laity laity has an age old history but once we are very clear of our state of calling i am sure that would give us umpteen number of answers for which we have been called for the faith of the church the faith of a believer is that god has called you this is our firm faith god has called you forget about the distinction that whether god has called you to be in the role of clergy whether god has called you to be in the role of a laity that is immaterial god has called you full stop believe in that truth secondly for what to where god has called you matters now the bible is very phenomenal in distinguishing the roles the duties and the functions of our call if we are clear of the purpose of our call then we would be faithful for the calling every ministry every work under the clouds is in the divine purpose and it is equally regarded equally considered equally upholded that whatever the service you do under the clouds is divine full stop no one is a champion when i enter into a hospital when i enter into a satellite station i am a layman there i cannot give advice to a doctor i cannot dr ma is just watching at me i cannot give advice to a surgeon i cannot give an advice while a prescription is being written because i am none i am a layman i should know my limits i should know my functions i should know my state even in case if you want to be forceful to intervene in the things in which you are not a champion in which you are not called for the result is as we know operation success and patient amma patient this is what happens take any field know your role know your limit set your boundaries as long as you are in the boundaries everything is fine everything is being accepted everything go goes with harmony but once you try to forcefully intervene in the things in which you are not a champion where you are not called for there the crisis emerges that's what the word lay laity the meaning it gives it is laity or lay the noun that describes the group of people who lack speciality or a specialization in a particular field of expertise this is a definition of a laity it is a greek term lay the term laity which means simply non professional this simply means non professional
the word laity has come from the Greek word lavos. That means simply folk. Or it can be a mass. When someone says you are a laity, you are one among the folks, full stop. The suffix at is just added to the word law, laity. That denotes state of being a lay person. When it comes to the matter of religion or faith, laity are considered as non-clergy family. As I told you in the beginning, clergy and non-clergy are the two things that combines to become a church. The word laity, for the first time in the history, it described to a non-clergy in the first century AD. In the letter of Clements to the Christian church, which is called as Epistle to the Corinthians. The role of the Christian lay persons is from that point, I'm talking about the first century AD, from that point forward was largely minimized to the congregation. And the distinction between the ordinary believer and a lay person, it is very essential to clarify the roles within the church. Compoundly we call the segment of the church as a believers. It is a very large umbrella under which we find prominently three categories. One is a laity, second one is a clergy, third one is the choir. Laity, clergy and choir. You know laity as I told you it is a non-ordained members. They are not allowed to make the functionaries of sacraments and the liturgy. When it comes to the clergy, these are the providing the spiritual guidance and looking after the administrations within the four walls of the church. And choir, you know. With this introduction, now when we look at the scripture portions, since time is not permitting me because every time we are crossing 9.30 which I don't want. So I'll just like to focus on one or two scripture portions. The four scriptures, four portions elaboratively will be discussed in the Telugu sermon. Old Testament reading is one of the very familiar reading. I wish and I request every one of you, please take some time. Today, just after going home, after retaining yourselves, please open the book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel, chapter 25. Read the whole chapter. Just read it once, no problem. Go for twice, read thrice. Go for fourth time, read fifth time. You will enjoy the beautiful narration of the novel of this chapter. It was the whole family drama is happening there. But the beauty of this first book of Samuel chapter 25 is from the beginning till the end of the chapter the crux, the core that emerges out of it is in all of this crisis the value of family system is beautifully picturized in this chapter. The value of a spouse, the role of a wife, the role of a husband, the role of a wife in Indian terminology where we proud to call it as Mahasadvi. We call it as Mahasadvi. Abigail, no way lesser than to hold the title of Mahasadvi. Her spouse, husband, in English Bible, which I don't want to utter from this pulpit, but go home and read that Bible, the term that has been used, probably we never use. 
we deem it as an unparliamentary word but still the bible has used that word to denote the about the husband of abigail very cruel man very crooked fellow very unfaithful fellow and gratitude fellow he has received all the favors from david and when the time has come he has just turned his face to david after all david is also human being like you and me so therefore the emotions of angry frustration have just come out of david and he said na 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 couple of days ago i was uh, watching the uh, speech of uh, addressing in one of the uh, platforms by president of uh, israel netanyahu if i am pronounced rightly i really liked one of his quotations he said the bible says i was very curious to know the word bible from the mouths of israelites he said the bible says there is a time for peace and there is a time for war have you watched this uh, addressing of uh, president and when i was watched and i was reading this scripture portion and the same thing has reflected in my mind when there was a time for peace david has made all the efforts to bring peace with this abigail's husband and his family and when he thought it's a time for war he never even thought a second moment he has prepared for the war he said no nothing doing i have done a lot at least the part of the gratitude when i couldn't able to get from that fellow then i he said now let us go and attack my dear friends i don't want to take much of it please go and read it and ask the holy spirit to teach the lessons from this chapter you will enjoy it. you will remember me for this the chapter 25 it talks about the wealthy nabal's greatest asset his wife abigail a clever and probably a beautiful virtuous woman Abigail in the Bible represents unseen side of injustice. Abigail in the Bible represents unseen side of iniquity. Abigail in the Bible represents unfair treatment. Probably it happens with anyone and everyone in our day-to-day -day life. Here comes the virtuous state that's the reason i have called her as maha sadvi how as a lay person needs to respond to the day to day events which are unfair which is injustice which is iniquity and which is mistreatment against us Abigail has beautifully responded despite of all her obstacles don't forget that women in the jewish culture of those days was always considered as a second class citizen sometimes third class citizen she had no value she was never considered as a human being in those days despite of all these realities how a women of god a lady women how she could able to address the everyday reality of life of injustice it happens with anyone it happens with everyone no one can escape with this experience of injustice injustice at home injustice in your workplace injustice in the church injustice among the friends injustice in the apartments it is a part of life it happens 
even 100% you are a man of who fears unto the lord but injustice still happens because we doesn't have an hard and fast rule that a person the other person needs to have the same values and the virtues no we are not the author for his behavior which is never in our hands the only thing we, which is in our hands is how we are going to respond to it that's all the only thing what we can do is we need to prepare for this great reality of life injustice will happen it will happen if it is not happened yesterday if it is not happen happen to today it is going to happen to you tomorrow because it happens to me also every moment of my life the same thing has happened in the family of abigail which makes us more virtuous in life is how are we going to respond to it abigail has set a model for us that is all this despite of all her obstacles abigail planted the seeds of generosity david was full of hunger his 400 crew the military was in hunger after realizing that her husband nabal has just refused then she has began to prepare herself with a greater generosity second word was humility was another virtue we can find in this great maha sadhvi lady abigail one is generosity second one is humility third one is faithful and fourth one is the resistance by germinating or sowing the seeds of generosity sowing the seed of humility sowing the seed of faithfulness sowing the seed of resistance she could able to save not only her family or her household but the entire kingdom a layman she could able to prophesy and could able to say the upcoming unseen king David, she said, if you are going for bloodshed, you might have to face the wrath of God and it is going to become a blood history in the kingdom of Israel. And also she affirmed stating that you are the chosen one of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone can give a prophecy, my friend. The lady, God has empowered you to make prophecy for the people of God. She had dare enough. She said, stop bloodshed. Change your mind. This is not the way which God is expecting from you. And secondly, she said, the grace of God has crowned you, dear David. And one day you are going to rule Israel. It changed the entire scenario. Entire scenario was changed. The attitude of David was changed. He could able to hear. He never felt that I have been anointed by God. I know that I am going to become the king of Israel. Why should I heed to you? Secondly, you are a woman. Why should I care your words? David had that option of reacting but very humbly he received the words of a woman he said fine for the great wisdom fine for the great counsel you have given me the lord spoke to me through you my dear lady thank you for giving me this wisdom see the role of lady wherever you are in which state you might be called my friends that state is quite precious in the sight of god God has no distinction between clergy. God has no, what to say, um, uh, how to put it. God has no, uh, I am not getting that word. Has no difference between the roles. God has called you and placed you that state. Be faithful for the state in which you have been called. No one is greater. Wearing a clerical robes, it doesn't make me great. This is just my office. This is just my office. 
I always ask God, help me, allow me, give me strength to be faithful for the calling. That's all. And God has called you for some state. Just be faithful to the call that God has given you. God loves equally, my friend. There is no sort of any disparity between the state of calling. You are precious. You have a purpose. Just proceed with that purpose. This is what the Old Testament uh, lesson gives us. I, I just stop here because time factor. Few things that the life of Abigail teaches us. How to treat those who work for us. David worked for the family of Abigail. And her husband has turned his face. But Abigail teaches us how to treat those who work for us. Never forget the person who help you in your life, my friends. Never ever forget. Never ever try to do harm to the person who was stood by you in the time of crisis. Whatever it may be, come what may. If you feel, if your heart says that X, Y, Z was a true friend in need when it was the heart, Please, please, never try to think any harm to that person. Abigail teaches us today. Secondly, how to leave trials in God's hand to deal with his manner and time. This is second lesson that we learn from the life of Abigail. We have trials, as I've told you. Every day is a day of trial. Every day is a day of challenge. Every day is a day of fear. Every day is a day of tear. Every day there is a day of crisis. But the beauty always lies when we surrender the things in God's hand to deal in His manner and time. God has His own art. God has His own style of dealing the things. Our style of dealing the things always ends in crisis. Because we are hasty, we are limited, and we are not perfect. I don't stand here to judge someone. I am not perfect. Let us be open and let me confess it. I am not a champion. I am not perfect. Every day I make an effort to become perfect. But still, till I die, I will never become a perfect. I can't become a perfect. But still my efforts are on. As long as my heart hits and all this moves on, I'll make an effort to become a perfect. If you put in the hands of God, my friends, God in his own style, he will resolve every crisis. That's what Abigail teaches us. Third thing, how to comfort and advise humbly when it is necessary. She knew very well that David is going to become the king. And she never resisted herself to give counsel to David. She said, no bloodshed, dear. Please stop it. And secondly, God has anointed you. We are looking for that prophecy. And lastly, how to accept reproof, reproof non-defensively. Always the human tendency is, we hear to respond or react. Isn't it? Yes or no? I'm going to close. Jameson has come with his book. <laughs> am I right? Sanjeevana, am I right? We always hear to react. But my dear friends, slightly change the art of life. Learn to listen, to respond. There is a vast difference. Learn to listen, to listen so that you can respond to it. A fool will react. A wise will respond. And that response also as the life of the Abigail teaches us to accept reproof or criticism non-defensively. When someone says this is an absolute fault of yours for a second, for a moment introspect yourself and if you feel that yes I was at fault don't defense yourself 
just say yes it would have been little different if it would have thought in this manner but i have failed i couldn't be able to do or take it up the way which you think that's what abigail has done with this i would like to withdraw myself from this pulpit my friends lady you are called by god whatever the profession it is medicine military teacher working for a, for a private firm wherever you are placed god has placed you full stop believe in this god has placed you this is the first lesson and you are equally anointed equally blessed with clergy and secondly every day there is a crisis in your call there is a challenge in your life think of abigail a virtuous woman how she handled day to day challenges in our life in her life submitting in the hands of god and thirdly never go back when things demand to rebuke to say something which is which the lord wants you to say in the form of prophecy in the form of advice in the form of counsel and lastly accept the criticism non defensively when someone criticizes you if there is something truth in that criticism be open accept it and try to put whatever the best you can do it so that you can avoid it in the years of life to come may god grant us such wisdom and grace amen